All right, so in this tutorial, we are going to learn about keywords, which are reserved words in Python, and about identifiers, which are names that you can give to variables, functions, etc. But let's get started immediately by creating a sample identifier. So let's go ahead and write number, and we are going to assign it the value of 25. So this right here is the identifier. It is a name that we have given to this variable and that the program will remember so that when we print this number, we can directly refer to the number and it will pick up that name. But of course, there are several rules about using names and about which names are permitted and which names are not permitted. So we cannot use any keywords that are already provided by the system, such as false here. We cannot use this keyword as a name because it is already assigned by the system. And we cannot use the term import either because that is also reserved by the system. So we need to use words that are not provided by the system, such as apple or any other item you have in your imagination. And now there's also one other thing you must remember that Python is a case sensitive language, which means apple with a capital A and apple with a lowercase a are two completely different items. So let's just go ahead and print these two to the console. So let's just right click on our main and click on run main. And you will see that the first apple, which is this apple over here, was printed as 20 and the second apple was printed as 25. And that's an example of case sensitivity when it comes to Python programming. And a lot of languages follow this structure and it gives you a lot of opportunity to change variable names. And it won't really take that long to get used to. You'll get into it, I promise. And finally, you need to be careful when using digits and special symbols because using a symbol such as this exclamation mark or the at symbol, these are not permitted in variable names or function names because they will, provide, they will create a lot of confusion in the program and the compiler is not really that happy about that stuff. And also when it comes to adding digits, adding a one in front of a variable name is not recommended because it doesn't work but you are more than welcome to add it at the end of the variable name or inside the variable name. It just can't be placed in front because it will just think it is a random number. But you are more than welcome to use the underscore and that can be helpful for certain situations. And it is not happy if you use the hyphen because hyphen is usually interpreted as a subtraction symbol. And you can see when we run this program, it will think we try to make this a negative apple, which doesn't make any sense logically on any level and you'll get an error in the program that says you cannot assign 20 to an operator, a minus apple. So be careful with what symbols you use. A general rule is just to stick with letters and possibly underscores and capital letters. So as long as you stick to those, your program should run fine. And later we will talk about naming conventions in some future videos. But for now, all you need to know is that identifiers are case sensitive they cannot be keywords and they should only include numbers at the end or inside the variable name. And right before I finish this video, I wanted to show you the keywords that you will encounter. You can actually just type this into Google and you will receive the same diagram, but you will see these are a bunch of reserved keywords that you will find in Python and none of these can be used in your variable names. Of course, you can include them somewhere in the middle of the variable name, but they cannot just be these variable names alone. So if you want to say apple class, that's okay, that's permitted. You can do apple class. And it will use this keyword, but of course it's not referring directly to that keyword. But if we decide just to use the class keyword, it will not be happy because that's reserved by Python. But yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in this video. So I will see you guys in the next Python tutorial.